Hi, I'm Ashley Weston. Hope everyone's doing fantastic. This video is part of my men's essential accessory series. To see the other articles and videos in this series, check out the link below. So I wanna to talk to you guys about undershirts. If you own any of the collared shirts that I recommend in my men's wardrobe essential series, then you definitely need crew and v-neck undershirts. But under no circumstance should you ever own a tank top undershirt, aka wife beater. They not only do absolutely nothing, they also just look horrible underneath your shirt because you can literally see the outline of it through any collared shirt. So your undershirts are an essential because they help provide a barrier between your collared shirts and your skin's oils, sweats, and deodorant. And this barrier will keep your shirts cleaner longer so that you can wear it a couple times before you have to get it dry cleaned, which will only extend the life of your shirts. Also, it'll make your collared shirts look even better, specifically your lighter colored ones, because it'll help prevent your skin Skin, any dark body hair you might have, your nipples and your sweat from showing through. And it'll provide a little extra layer to your outfit so that it will give you a little extra warmth or it'll wick away moisture depending on what time of year it is. So how should you wear an undershirt under a shirt? All right, I know that sounds really stupid, but it's so rare when I have a client that knows how to properly wear an undershirt. So a good undershirt, just so you guys know, a good undershirt should never be seen by anyone. There are two rules for wearing an undershirt. The first rule is if you're wearing a collared shirt that is unbuttoned, so the first one or two buttons are undone, then you always need to wear a V-neck undershirt because again, no one should see your undershirt. Second rule, if you have the collar shirt buttoned all the way up, then you must wear a crew neck undershirt because if you go with a V-neck, then you will be able to see the outline of the V through your shirt, which is not a good look. It just looks like shit. Now, I do wanna bring up a point that I think is worth mentioning, and that's if you are a heavier set guy or a guy who is, we're gonna get a little personal here, a guy who has nipples that really show through, protrude, then you should wear an undershirt underneath your t-shirt. So just like rules one and two, if you're wearing a crew neck t-shirt, wear a crew neck undershirt. If you're wearing a v-neck t-shirt, then wear a v-neck undershirt. You should never be able to see that undershirt though peeking through in the sleeves or underneath here or up here. Your undershirt has to still stay hidden under your t-shirts. So let's talk about when it's appropriate to not wear an undershirt because there's a really fine line between when you do and don't wear one. Now, if you're wearing a white collared shirt on its own, so with no jacket over it, it's appropriate to go without an undershirt, especially if you're lighter skin because when you're wearing a white undershirt under a white collared shirt, you can see the sleeves on the undershirt, so it just doesn't look that great. Now, there's definitely undershirts like this light gray one here or like a nude color that helps fix this issue. If you can see the undershirt sleeves, definitely go without. This isn't so much of an issue with darker skinned guys, especially if they wear an undershirt that is close to their skin color. The only exception to all of what I'm saying right now though is if you have darker nipples or nipples that protrude, point out, then you, no matter what, you need to wear an undershirt. It is very important. I would rather see the sleeves of your undershirt than your nipples. So I get this next question a lot from my clients and from readers and viewers, and they're always asking me, are undershirts supposed to be tight? The answer is sort of. Now, they shouldn't be super tight, but they should fit close to your body and to your arms because you don't want it to add any extra wrinkles through your shirt or you don't wanna be able to see the outline of the undershirt as well. This leads me to my next point, which is that your undershirts should be thin. They are an underlayer, so you want them to be thin because they will feel better and they won't add bulk to your frame, which Believe me, you always want to avoid doing that with your clothes. Now, should you only have white undershirts? 
Not necessarily. Choose the undershirt that is closest to your skin color. So if you are darker skinned, then you wanna go with a darker gray, brown, or black undershirt. And if you are a lighter to medium skin tone, then definitely go with either a light gray, nude, or white undershirt. Now just a warning though about light gray undershirts. I've noticed that they tend to make lighter shirts, like t-shirts or collared shirts look slightly dingy and almost washed out. So that's why I recommend a nude or white undershirt in that scenario. So another quick side note, if you can see your undershirts at all through any of your lighter colored dress shirts, then either the dress shirt's material is too thin or you need a thinner undershirt or an undershirt that better matches your skin tone. I just needed to mention that real quickly because I see it pretty often with men wearing just super thin dress shirts. So now that you know everything there is to even know about an undershirt, probably even beyond that, Let's get into the best undershirts that my clients and I love. First up, I've got Tommy John's Second Skin Crew Neck and Deep V-Neck undershirts, which I love. The fit is awesome. Also, the fabric is super soft and has a bit of stretch in it, so it won't cause any wrinkles under your shirts. And they offer these in the white, nude, and black colors. Now, here's the thing. They're not very cheap. But unlike their underwear, which I talk about in my underwear story, their undershirts are actually quite durable. They'll last you a good while. A quick note though, with their V-necks, they offer them in a deep V-neck and a high V-neck. Go with the deep V-neck, because like I say in all my stories, my articles, videos, if you go without a tie, you always want to have the top two to three buttons undone. So if you go with the high V-neck, you'll actually be able to see the undershirt, which is a huge no-no. So instead, go with the deep V-neck. Next up is Rib T, who you might remember from my t-shirt story, but now I wanna talk about their undershirts because they are some of the softest, most comfortable undershirts out there. Some of my clients have even said it feels like they're wearing a fluffy layer of air. So I've got this retrofit tri-blend gray undershirt, which is great for lighter skin guys, but aside from the tri-blend, you can't go wrong with their Supima Cotton or their Evo Tensil. Honestly, any of their undershirts are awesome. Now I've got these undershirts shirts by Calvin Klein. They're a great budget-friendly option. The fit is good on them. They come in two different fits, slim and regular, so it covers all body types. Also, the fabric's decent. It's not too thick or too thin, which is a common problem with undershirts in this price range. Now, they do make a similar shirt to Tommy John's. It's called their body modal, but I just say spend the extra couple dollars and go with Tommy John's. And lastly, I just want to mention a more specialized undershirt by a company called Spanx. If you're looking to slim down a little bit, but you don't want to be wearing something super restrictive, then their undershirts are perfect for you. Check out this link for details. So those are the undershirts that I recommend and use on my clients. This video is part of my men's essential accessory series. Check out my website for a more in-depth article that includes all my product links and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. If you like this video, remember, give it a thumbs up. Arara says, I'll see you in the corner or the next one. <laughs> that was so terrible. This is hard to be thuggy. Alright, essays. I'll see you in the next one. Alright, essays. I'll see you in the corner or the next one. Alright, essays. Alright, essays. I'll see you in the corner or the next one.